cuai Jadi kalau D1 kira-kira hari pertama dia akan cuai kat sini Lepas tu yang seterusnya D2, D3 semua Dia akan menuai pada hari kedua ketika dah seterusnya And major pumps. Okay, first, as you can see, this is a pumps. Okay. For the major pumps, we apply the EFP. Must be done one layer with two or three concentrated rings. While for the major pumps, this is the three. Okay. This is the harvester puff, and this one is the front sticking puff. The EFP must be applied in front sticking puff. So apply here. This is EFP. As to remember, E, F, B is apply in front staking puff. Okay. Why we must? apply E F B in a straight way why this is because okay. it is the bombs As you can see, for the major pumps, the roots might follow the canopies. Is around the canopy of the pumps, okay? So we apply the EFP here because the video root is at the moist condition. Must come to the moist condition. So we apply here. So the is EFP. Okay, has to remember it must be around by for the canopy. Okay, and for image pumps. As I just said before, it must be done also follow around the canopy, around the pumps. Okay, here is EFP. Next to bombs. Okay. Actually, there's many styles for the application of FP. First, we can do C shape. C shape. 
the application or we can apply between four pumps which is five if FB here five and this one ten EFB five times ten EFB ten EFB okay here or we can do between four pumps or between two pumps why the root or root will go to the area that are moist image image Di mana satu bibi teres? Oh ini bibi teres. Okey, kenapa? Sebab apa? Ini ini ada alu gajah kan? Okey, alu air. Ah, ini alu air. Okey, bila kita buat sistem susun itu, bila kita buat pembajaan, dia mengelak daripada baja itu jatuh ke bawah. Ah, jadi baja akan berkumpul pasti ada kawasan kawasan teres. Tak suka bibi teres ni. Pacak air Untuk mengelakkan kelepas tu Bok jatuh ke bawah Dan air kuat dia akan jatuh Dan Pacak tu empat atau tiga Pada api tu Selok-eloknya kalau kita nak buat Lepas pada pipi Kita kena buat tentukan poin ni Dia letak sama juga Ada dua pokok ni Tapi kita kena pacak Dua ataupun uh, tiga ataupun empat Jadi kita kerja yang buat Basal Basal kuning Kita buang tu, kita ambil kelapa ni. Kita ambil yang kita kena tanggung. Oh, ikut yang kita pacak tu lah kan? Haa. Tapi kalau kawasan dia cerun lah. Terlalu cerun, wajib dia macam ni. Wajib lepas dia, kena dekat bibir, tere. Kalau cerun sangat? Kita buang cerun. Kawasan cerun sangat memang wajib kena buat. Sebab dia akan pacak kaya. Dia akan tahan buah. Buah itu betul macam ni. Kalau bila pukul nanti ni, dia punya.
Imagine a world where you can take scraps of last night's dinner, toss them into a tank and produce energy for various users. In this episode of Business Circle, we'll discover how palm oil's waste can be a rich source of energy, proving one mill's trash can also be its treasure. The palm oil sector constantly seeks ways to further enhance its sustainability efforts and reduce greenhouse gas emissions such as methane created from palm oil processing. As such, EPP5 of the Economic Transformation Programme encourages palm oil mills to capture the methane gas from palm oil mill effluent or POME via biogas trapping facilities, which will then be converted into a renewable source of energy. The industry has been regulated by Malaysian Palm Oil Board or MPOB. Dr. Chu Yuan Mei, Director General of MPOB, said that they are encouraging biogas capture to utilize its energy content and to reduce the carbon footprint of palm oil production. Biocompressed natural gas or bio-CNG is one of the ways to utilize this biogas and MPOB is pleased to collaborate in this venture. The world's first bio-CNG commercial plant from palm oil mill effluent has been commissioned to Sungai Tengi Palm Oil Mill. Currently, we are collaborating closely with MPOB and Sam Dhabi Offshore Engineering to install the first commercial scale bio CNG facility in Malaysia. By doing more biogas capture and utilization, palm oil industry will be seen as serious in reducing carbon emission and further contribute to national target of 40% reduction in carbon intensity by 2020. Sam Adabi Offshore Engineering principally involved in supplying, installing, commissioning and providing the technology for the bio-CNG business. We are putting our resources and focus to find the solutions that we can export out this energy source. We have four tiers of processes in bio-CNG systems. The first tier is the pre-treatment of the biogas which aim to purify or remove any impurities. The second tier process, which is the core technologies, is to upgrade the biogas by increasing the methane concentration in the biogas stream. It is then compressed to a third tier process into 250 bar pressure before it is stored to a fourth process in our bio-CNG trailers. Now, how is the bio-CNG utilised at the end of the day? For this project, the bio-CNG is used to replace the current use of liquid petroleum for the generation of steam and heat. The bio-CNG is supplied to commercial entities such as OMI Alloy, Sindirin Berhad and Alloy Wheel Plant located in Sarinda. The introduction of bio-CNG provides the local industry for the first time a carbon-free green fuel and as a cheaper fuel option. Bio-CNG uh, as a source of fuel are being used at our foundry processes, uh, at our melting furnace, our heat treatment plant and also in our paint shop. The advantages for using Bio-CNG is ultimately uh, we do have a cost saving and at the same time it is clean whereby we expect less maintenance costs for our equipment. It is possible for us to label a product under a green product and that is of a great advantage for us to market a product, especially in Europe. As we strive to have more mills implementing biogas facilities in Malaysia, reducing the carbon footprint through biogas capture enables competitive market access of palm products, thus improving palm oil's sustainability.